Chapter 26 And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from twenty years old and upward throughout their fathers' houses, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eleazar the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanok, of whom cometh the family of the Hanokites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites, and they that were numbered of them were fourteen three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram, which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah, when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah, when that company died, what time the fire devoured two hundred and fifty men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. The sons of Simeon after their families, of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Jamin, the family of the Jamanites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Sheol, the family of the Sheulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shunai, the family of the Shunites, of Oznai, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Erod, the family of the Erodites, of Areli, the family of the Arelites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, forty thousand and five hundred. The sons of Judah were Ur and Onan, and Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, after their families, were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Pharez, the family of the Pharzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Pharez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamel, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Issachar, after their families, of Tola, the family of the Toleites, of Pua, the family of the Punites, of Jashub, the family of the Jashubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Sered, the family of the Sardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jalil, the family of the Jalilites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Of the sons of Manasseh, of Maker, the family of the Makerites, and Maker begat Gilead. Of Gilead came the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead. Of Jeezer, the family of the Jeezerites, of Helek, the family of the Helekites, and of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites, and of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites and of Shemida the family of the Shemideites, and of Hefer the family of the Heferites. And Zelophehad the son of Hefer had no sons but daughters, and the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala and Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim after their families, of Shuthela the family of the Shuthalites, of Beka the family of the Bakrites, of Tehan the family of the Tehanites. And these are the sons of Shuthila, of Iran, the family of the Iranites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Joseph, after their families. The sons of Benjamin, after their families, of Bela, the family of the Belaites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites, of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites, of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan after their families. Of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher after their families, of Jimna, the family of the Jimnites, of Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites, of Beriah, the family of the Beriahites. Of the sons of Beriah, 
of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Jaziel, the family of the Jazielites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shilam, the family of the Shilamites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families. And they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children of Israel, six hundred thousand and a thousand, seven hundred and thirty. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families, of Gershon the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath the family of the Kohathites, of Merari the family of the Merarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Marlites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korathites. And Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram Aaron and Moses and Miriam their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Chapter 5 Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death, there is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. 
We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. The End of the First Epistle General of John Good morning, everyone. Today we have awakened to a new day, and in the context of the tragedy which occurred at Maria, we remember the words of the hymn, There is a place of quiet rest, near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. We remember the words of the hymn, There'll be no dark valley when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home. And today as we contemplate what happened in Madia and we feel the pangs of grief and sorrow, we just like to say a word from the Bible to comfort our hearts and to channel our thoughts during this time of national pain and grief. And so we are going to say a few words on the scripture passage found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 4. Jesus says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We want to say a few words on the comfort of God, the comfort of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that your Holy Spirit will visit us yet again. In a special way, Lord, as we, we glean from your word strength and information to process what happened at Madia. May your Holy Spirit help us to understand. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today our country, Guyana, is in mourning. Today our country is in mourning because of the 19 children, 18 of them school girls and one five-year-old boy who died Sunday night when fire swept through a heavily grilled dormitory which housed students of the Madia Secondary School in Region 8, Potaro Siparuni Region. God's promise to us at times like these is, Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. Friend of mine, the words of Jesus have a message of comfort to those who are suffering affliction or bereavement. You see, friend of mine, our sorrows do not spring out of the ground. But the Bible is clear in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 33, which says, God doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. When God permits trials and afflictions, it is for our profit that we might be partakers of His holiness, according to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 10. And if received in faith, the trials that seem so bitter and hard to bear will prove a blessing. The cruel blows that blights the joys of earth will be the means of turning our eyes to heaven. And you know how many there are who would never have known Jesus had not sorrow led them to seek comfort in him. O oh, friend of mine, in all the affliction of humanity, God is afflicted. And in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. According to Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 and Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 18. Speaking of Israel and uh, the troubles they went through, the Bible says of God, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. And so God allowed Job to pass through his experience so that today we may see the reality of the great controversy around us and know that God is not the one behind the pain and the suffering and death we see around us today. But Satan is the one ultimately responsible for death and pain and suffering. God allowed Job's sufferings so that today we can understand that the same God who comforted Job 
who lost his ten children at one blow, will also comfort the hearts of the parents who lost their children in the fire which destroyed the dormitory which housed students of the Madia Secondary School in Region 8. O oh, friend of mine, God would not have us remain pressed down by dumb sorrow with sore and breaking hearts. God would have us look up and behold his dear face of love. You see, sometimes the blessed Savior stands by many whose eyes are so blinded by tears that they do not discern him. But he longs to clasp our hands, to have us look to him in simple faith, permitting him to guide us. The heart of Jesus is open to our griefs, our sorrows, and our trials. He has loved us with an everlasting love and with loving kindness compass us about and we may keep the heart stayed upon him and meditate upon his loving kindness all the day and he will lift the soul the heart above the daily sorrow and perplexities into a realm of peace and so ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters today today we are praying for the parents siblings relatives and friends of the children who died on sunday evening today we are praying especially especially we will pray especially for their parents the parents of the 19 persons who died the parents of adonijah jerome trussell thomas lisa roberts delicia edwards loretta williams natalie bellarmine ariana edwards cleoma simon sabrina john Today we will be praying for the parents of Martha DeAndre and her twin Mary DeAndre. We'll be praying for the parents of Belnisa Evans, Laureen Evans, Omerfia Edwin, Nicklean Robinson, Sharina Daniels, Yolanda Carter, Andrea Roberts, and Rita Jeffrey. Before we pray, we just want to say a few things from the Word of God. In the light of what happened, the tragedy, number one, we must trust God in spite of the pain and the grief, even as Job trusted him. We must trust God in spite of the pain and the grief, even as Job trusted him. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 and 9 says, God speaking says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts god saw everything but we cannot see everything behind the scenes we do not know that perhaps we do not know that perhaps the students who died said their prayers before they went to bed maybe some of them listened to some gospel music and their hearts were tuned to god before they went to bed Maybe some read a verse or two or a chapter in their Bibles before they went to bed. Only God knows. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11 says, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Only God knows. God will take care. God will take care and God will take into account the faith of the parent of the five-year-old who died. Secondly, in the light of the tragedy at Madia, we must look beyond the incident to the reality of the great controversy between good and evil, Christ and Satan raging around us. We must look, we must look beyond this singular incident to the reality of the great controversy raging around us. That there is an adversary, a devil who goes about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Speaking of Satan, the Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 44 that he was a murderer from the beginning. That he was a murderer from the beginning. But the Bible declares of Jesus in John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And God says in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 32, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth said the lord god i have no pleasure in the death of him or her who dies god is saying and today as we are weeping his heart is breaking for we serve a loving god but there is this great controversy and because of of sin death has entered into the world because of satan and sin death has entered the human experience so we must be reminded of this great controversy even as we process this tragedy
Number three, we must ask for and claim God's comfort. Those who mourn must ask for and claim God's comfort. And those who intercede for them would ask God, should ask God to comfort their hearts. God is a God of comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. O oh, friend of mine, God's comfort will comfort the hearts of those who mourn at this time. And we will pray that God will bear them up, even as he bore up Job, and they would feel the comforting arms of God around them. O oh, friend of mine, God's love opens a channel into the wounded and bruised heart and becomes a healing balsam to those who sorrow. And Jesus told his disciples, Jesus told his disciples in John chapter 14 and verse 18, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Oh, friend of mine, Jesus desired his disciples to understand that he would not leave them orphans. I will not leave you comfortless. He declared, I will come to you. St. John chapter 14, verse 18 and 19. Oh, precious, precious, glorious assurance of eternal life. Even though he was to be absent, even though Jesus was to be absent from them, their relation to him was to be that of a child to its parent. The words spoken to the disciples come to us through their words. The comforter is ours as well as theirs at all times and in all places, in all sorrows and in all affliction, when the outlook seems dark and the future perplexing and we feel helpless and alone, the comforter will be there. These are times when the comforter will be sent in answer to the prayer of faith. And finally, as we process the tragedy, the death of these 19 children, we must look beyond today to when Christ will come again and put a permanent end to Satan, pain, suffering, and death. We must look beyond today to when Jesus comes again and put a permanent end to pain, suffering, and death. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 to 5 assures us, the Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, John says, And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Remember, dear one, God's tomorrow will be better than today. God's tomorrow will be better than today. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from this stormy blast and our eternal home. Father, we lift before you. First and foremost, the parents of those who lost their children. Oh, the grief only you can understand on account of the manner of death. Perhaps they were hoping that these children would return at the end of the, of the term. Now they would never return. And Father, we pray that you put your arms around them, even as you comforted Mary and Martha at the death of their brother Lazarus, even as you comforted Job. You know what, how, you know how to reach each parent and each sibling who is grieving. And we pray that as you minister to each one individually, Lord, may they feel your comfort. We pray that you, remind, you would remind all of us that life is short and uncertain. And the best we can do with our three score years and ten is to turn it over to Jesus. We pray that, that, that parents would be reminded that each day they should lift their children up before God, that God would protect them and watch over them. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will help us, even though we might not understand, 
to trust you still, to trust you. Like Job, the way Job trusted you even though he could not understand why he lost his ten children and his possessions. Bear up these grieving ones, Lord. Fulfill the promise to them, Lord, of, of John 14, 18. You said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Go to these, these mothers and fathers who lost their children, Lord. Go to these brothers and sisters who lost their sister, who lost a sibling in the tragedy. And Father, we, we look forward to the day when you will come. And all the pain and troubles of earth will pass away forever. Keep us faithful, Lord. And when the roll is called up yonder, may we be present there to answer to our own names. And then you will explain to us all that happened on Sunday night. Take charge there, Jesus. And whatever else we did not pray for concerning this tragedy at Madia, please, Lord, grant, as you perceive all of us have need of, and in particular those who mourn and the parents and the siblings at this time, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.